Hey everyone, I just wanted to make a little video uh, and uh, I'm going to be reading in Mark 8, 22 through 26 probably. And um, I love the book of Mark. Uh, the people at Marie will know I love Mark. It's got, it's just chock full of things. Uh, I just like to read that book, but it's Mark 8, starting at the 22nd verse, it said, And he sick, cometh to Bethsaida, the he here is Jesus. And they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. He healed a lot of blind people, blind men. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see Men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And when he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into any town, into the town, nor tell it to any in the town. The, the first touch, you know, he spit in his eyes, on his eyes. Uh, we would have certainly have a problem with that today, but Jesus, um, he, he healed a lot of different methods. The first touch came and he saw men as trees walking. That's not how we want to, uh, for it to wind up. So he touched him a second time. The first touch an older minister told me it's when the word of God comes. That's the first touch. It causes you to see better. The second touch comes uh, when you obey the word of God, when you put it in your life. That's the second touch. Just hearing it won't clear you up, but when you start to obey it, it, uh, it clears you up. I know when you take an eye test, they'll Rotate that little thing, say, which one's better, this one or this one? One or two or whatever they do. And they just keep on going until uh, they get it at the best. Um, you know, you can have sight, but no vision. Helen Keller said that. You can have sight with no vision. And we've got to have our vision. It said without a vision, where there is no vision, the, the people perish. I think that was Proverbs 29, 18. So we need vision. And uh, we need vision in our marriage. Uh, we need vision in our church. Um, you know, we, we have a communication gap sometimes. Uh, the, the husband and the wife, they speak different languages. Uh, to me, the wife speaks love and the man speaks respect. And when it's talking about husbands and wife in Ephesians in the fifth chapter, it said, uh, for the man to love his wife as Christ loved the church. And the man, it says, the woman said, see thou reverence her husband. She wants respect. She wants love. He wants respect. Um, we've got a, I know a couple, one of them can speak Spanish and English. The other one only speaks English. If they both speak in English to each other, they make it pretty good. But the man is very limited in what uh, Spanish he understands. So uh, we have to we have to be speaking the same language. Um, when a when a man gives his wife roses and he gets no reaction. And he, she's telling him not to do that anymore. So if you want roses and your husband gives you roses, and that's not exactly what you wanted, but it beats not getting anything, you need to make kind of a big deal over getting those roses. It's the same way with God when he sends you the word. If you have no reaction to it, um, if you have no reaction to it, then God doesn't have any incentive to send you the word again. Uh when the word comes, you need to tell God, feed me, Lord. I remember my children, uh, they used the word hungry. I don't know where they got that word because we always said hungry, but they would say, I'm hungry. And you better believe when they said they were hungry, hungry, my wife would get them something to eat. 
But you need to tell God I'm hungry. Don't go around acting full. Don't go around acting like you don't need any word. Then that's what you're going to get. Nagging don't work. I know I'm kind of on this, that, and the other, but I think all of this, if you'll listen, could probably help you. Nagging don't work. Uh, you might can out talk your mate, but nagging will not change them. We need to we need to pray for clarity. We we need to pray for that second touch. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed this today. Uh, as I said, when when that word of God comes, that's the first touch. But you need that second touch. You need to be hungry. You need to be asking God to send you the word. Uh, I told on another broadcast. Um, once I went through a real dry spell at Meridian, and I couldn't, I, I, I went to church, I saw the hungry faces, but I had nothing. And I started begging God. I mean, I didn't just start begging him today, and, and the answer came the next day. I kept, I started begging God, and um, uh, I, I was begging him to send the word of God to those hungry people. And, um, uh, when, when God heard me, uh, I had a little vision and I went to the refrigerator and there was milk just pouring out of it. Just uh, The bottles just started, uh, jugs just started pouring out of the refrigerator. When you get hungry, when you tell God that you're hungry, when you ask God to feed you, he will send you something. It's sort of supply and demand. If there's no demand, there's very little supply. So uh, just tell God, water me, feed me, Lord, and I'm sure that he'll send you the word of God. May God bless you. I hope it, uh, that, that he sends you what you need. May God bless you.